Hello and welcome to the third episode of the Spotlight Podcast, the unofficial podcast for Century 21 sales representatives in Canada, where we discuss the hot topics and important news in the real estate industry. So I'm your host, Linus Killius, and with me, as always, is Aaron Richardson. Aaron is a broker and general manager with Century 21 Heritage Group. Aaron has an extensive background in online marketing, technology, and customer service. And I'm the head of business development at the real estate marketing company, Homania. So today's show, we've got a lot of great content. We've got some great news we're going to talk about. And we've got a segment we're going to also do on the on Rep Magazine. And we're going to try another segment as well called App of the Week. So we're going to try and get into more of a regular format. It's just me and Aaron this week. We've got no guest. So we'll try and see how this goes. So um, before we get started, though, Aaron, how was your week? Week is good. Uh, bu- business is, uh, is, is very uh, active in the market. So agents are... Uh, out there selling and, and getting things uh, accomplished. Lots of still multiple offers and everything's going crazy, so. Well, that's what Korea tells us as well. Yeah. Um, so I actually got something in the mail today. Okay. I got this little UPS package. Inside of it is this little tote bag, which comes huh. with a, a registration for your online real estate courses. So I've actually registered for my online real estate courses. Not to become a competition for you, Aaron, but I just thought <laughs> I just thought it'd be a good experience for myself uh, being in real estate marketing uh, to get that experience and become a licensed real oh, estate. Oh, great! Congratulations. So, that's uh, that's a, well. That's... Don't congratulate me yet. I've got to write my tests and pass everything. When first did you um, When did you end up uh, signing up? Uh, uh, did you get? In before the April first, I did. I did just okay. just before the the rules changed for Aria. So um, I am getting grandfathered in, so I don't have to worry about taking the new format tests. It's just the old format. Ones. So it was interesting, actually, Linus. Uh, I was doing a career seminar last month, and it was about the twentieth of the the month, so March twentieth, and um, the and I was I was trying to explain how the you know real estate agent or the um, licensing has been uh, upgraded or changed or or is uh, doing something a little different with the uh, pre-registration courses and first I had thought it was five courses that uh, they were going to make the people take um, instead of three so they were going from three to five as of April 1st um, and then went on the website and it actually said that they would know it's going to be four courses so I called around made sure that was a correct information I was giving these people that were coming for this career seminar. And uh, and then I, I looked on it today. Somebody came in and says, yeah, you got to do five courses. I'm like, what? Five? You know, I, I tried to make sure this is correct and everything went on and a completely new page pops up. So it's actually five courses now that you do have to take. Um, and that includes the the two additional um, courses, which is commercial and uh, and uh, law. And just so. so our listeners know too, this is for Ontario Real Estate Association. So this is for if you're taking real estate courses in Ontario, everything's mm-hmm. changing. That's the reason why I decided to jump on this now. It's something I've always wanted to do, uh, but because they're changing it to make it a little bit more comprehensive in terms of additional courses and such, I wanted to make sure I got in before that yeah. deadline. So I didn't do, I have to do as much to get the licensing uh, to snuff. Um, so yeah, speaking of a hot market too, Korea actually just came out with their numbers for March, uh, and it's showing that well, pretty much all across the country, except uh, in a few notable situations, uh, notably obviously Calgary and some areas of Saskatchewan, there's been record growth again in the real estate industry in terms of even sales numbers as well as home value too. So uh, obviously we've been seeing this trend going up and up at, uh, for the past, I don't know, five, six, seven years now. And always the question is, when's it going to stop too? That always makes me nervous as a homeowner too. Yeah. You know, you know, everyone's always worried about that kind of bubble bursting. Um, so with the, obviously with the exception of Calgary in that area, do, do you see any kind of end in sight to this rapid increase? I, know. I, I, I would have said at the beginning of the year or end of last year, you know, it's got to end. It's, you know, and I did. I, well, told, I think people were saying that five years ago. Well, <laughs> and I wasn't. And I, it was interesting. Um, five years ago, people were saying it. And I was saying, no, you know, I don't see any reason why the, you know, the interest on it can continue in terms of the, the sales and the, as well as the, um, um, the price, you know, why, why it wouldn't continue going up. Uh, there was really no indication of, uh, of that other than some of the media out there that's saying it's got a, you know, there's a bubble and then all this sort of stuff. Now they're saying there's no bubble and, you know, everybody's changing their mind on things. But um, I got to tell you, this is the first year in 10 years that I've been in the business um, that I actually think, wow, there's no way it can go higher than this. <laughs> but looking at all uh, factors and talking to a lot of people who are uh, you know, much more, um, I guess, I guess much smarter than I am in terms of the numbers and all that kind of stuff um, is the fact that, you know, what, what could what could change that would affect it in a negative way or or slow things down and immigration policies. Uh, we don't see anything changing there. We don't see anything changing with the uh, uh, Bank of Canada interest rate. And, and even if it did, it would be a small change anyway. So I don't I don't see any 
indication unless there's a major world event to, to, to change what's going on. Yeah, for sure. And I imagine the increases may still keep coming, maybe not these, these alarming rates. Like looking yeah. at the numbers for Vancouver, Fraser Valley, like out in BC there, like we're talking 20% year over year growth of the That's health. That's crazy. Yeah, Amazing. The, the home prices. Um, yeah, well, the national average is just over 500,000. But if you take out Vancouver and Toronto, it's a little bit more reasonable at 366,000. So uh, me being from Kingston, I was actually happy to see that Kingston's been growing nice and steadily too, about 10% year over year. So my home is is increasing in value uh, as well. I, I, I was assuming this was only affecting Toronto, Vancouver kind of areas with this, this rapid growth, but it does seem to be all across the country in most urban centers. So yeah, And of course, you have to buy into the market if you're selling unless you're retiring. So it's great for, I think, if you know, in terms of values, if, if you're retiring, Retiring or looking to cash out and finally take advantage of the equity you have in your home, it's a perfect opportunity to do that because you know that the market's a great market and it has been for a while. But who knows? You never know. It could be another 20% up next year, oh, too. So. Yeah. Every year I think there's an end in sight, but you never really know. Yeah. The poor students who are just finishing university oh. trying to get into the marketplace, though, there's going to be really be tough, tough for them. You know what the average age for the for a first time home buyer? No, what is it? Uh, average age for a home, home buyer now is 36, I believe. Is the last uh, last time yeah. I saw it. I'm not surprised. Time, that's that's going to have to keep going up too. I'm sure parents are having problems kicking their kids out of the nest too with all these prices going up for the homes. Yeah, no so. kidding. All right. So, anything else you want to say about the the hot market and everything? Because I know Talk there's a lot of popularity for this. I, yeah, the one thing I do want to say, and, and I'm, I notice it every year, and I'm wondering when it's going to happen this year. And every market um, does the ups and downs. It does this, you know, uh, spring uh, value increase, and then it sort of levels out and it kind of plateaus and sometimes comes down in the in the summer in terms of uh, inventory uh, supply and demand and, and the house pricing. But um, at a certain point in time, and I'm kind of starting to see it because when agents are going on their home evaluations um, two months ago, the homeowners are actually surprised at what they could get in terms of the house value and multiple offers were happening. They're getting much more than they thought. Then the homeowners now are, um, well, maybe a month ago, were saying, okay, this is what now I'm going to sort of hope to get and they're starting to believe with the mark happening in the market so they 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 know what's happening there's they just the expectation is for a high price now that's getting to the point where the homeowners are expecting too much like you're going on a home evaluations um and the agents are saying around our office in the toronto area they're going on home evaluations and they're saying um no i want this for my house and a hundred thousand more than really they think you know the agent thinks they can get um so what's going to end up happening and, and this happens any market across canada is we have to be careful and the homeowners have to be careful because soon as that value um, gets to a certain height they're going to want a little more and they're not going to get it so things are going to start staying on the market longer um you're not going to get the multiple offers they're going to be disappointed in the agent because the agent's kind of going oh we, we tried for multiples and didn't get it so you have to sort of start preparing people to say listen you know we're going to hit the edge if we don't get multiples just keep that in mind that the expectation can't be that every house you know gets 10 offers so just have that expectation level it's going to change would this crop into listing presentations too? Like say when you're trying to get that client in the first place, if, an, if another agent's just being kind of like more agreeable with the, the client and you're trying to be a bit more realistic, would that be an issue getting them to say like, listen, I don't think you can get that much, but they, then they, the client might say, well, the last agent here said that I could get, you know, I could get that value for my house. So like, is yeah. that a problem at all or? Yeah, well, I mean, it's always been an issue and always is an issue, um, you know, uh, Unfortunately, the uh, the homeowners uh, tend to uh, usually side with you know somebody who's who's um, more positive and more terms in of the line with their get, right. Well, for sure. Um, but you you yeah you just have to be um, you have to be the agent that can prove it and it can show them statistical reasons why. And if if they're if the if the homeowners are you know educated and they, and they they have any common sense, they're going to go with the agent that you know wasn't just trying to. Yeah, it you know, seems to know their stuff, I guess, the one they can trust. Exactly, them, so. yeah. 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 Um, so I guess we can move on to the main segment of our show. We've, we've actually got a magazine that Aaron wanted to talk a little bit about today, Rep Magazine. You want to tell us about that, Mark? So I've got about three different uh, publications that they've been sending our office and our agents and, uh, and whatnot. Uh, the latest uh, Rep Magazine just came out. And I, and I noticed another article in here, and it seems to be a trend in their, in their magazines. Now, I'm not here to... Um, totally bash any any one particular magazine or, or promote another or anything like that. But I did want to bring up some good points with this magazine that seems to be something that they continue to do. And um, I don't necessarily think it's a positive thing for the real estate market or for you know us as agents to be promoting. So I'm going to go into, I'll, uh, let me just bring up the first one. 
that just came out. Uh, so the top 100 agents. It says top 100 agents. Now there's no little mark there or like exclamation or anything like any any sort of indication that we should read somewhere else. What, what, what's the top 100 out of what? For what market? For is this the top 100 in Canada? Is this the top? You know, nothing at all. So. When we go to read further in the magazine, you've got your top 100. It's got a full list of 100 agents. You start reading down here, and I see some of the agents that are on here, and I'm, I'm quite surprised they made the top 100. So I started looking to a little bit uh, uh, deeper, and you have certain agents in here. Um, we'll take Sam McDaddy, for example, who I know is in the top three agents on the Toronto Real Estate Board. So I'm, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he was a top 100 or something for sure, at least the Toronto Real Estate Board. And then right beside him, we have another guy there, Frank, and I'm sure he's a wonderful agent right here. Um, but I looked into, you know, some of the stats that I can pull off um, within the industry, and I'm not saying those are accurate either. But um, for the best of my knowledge, um, good old Frank here has uh, done four deals in the last uh, year, whereas Sam Daddy's done 699. So you know, Sam Frank's got a nice big picture of them and all the rest of it. And it turns out that this um, publication allows people to submit their uh, information to go into the top 100, but for no apparent reason. So anybody could have been in the top 100 if they had submitted their information in here. Um, and quite a few of the people that are in the top 100 are also some of the uh, advertising that uh, that, that are in the paper like, or in, in the magazine. So if you have uh, you know, a company like your Main Street Realty, for example, um, they've got three or four of their agents in the top 100. Um, so again, it's... it's Very misleading, actually, that's for sure. It, well, it's false and misleading advertising, absolutely. Um, it's a good thing they didn't pay to be in here. And I don't know if that really would be a determining factor if it was to go to a, a council, let's say in, in Ontario, the Real Estate Council of Ontario has a rule against this. You can't be false and misleading. Now, however, they didn't pay for the advertising. One could argue it wouldn't matter if you're giving them information and you're in a top 100 agent, um, you should stipulate 100 of what? And it has to be accurate. So so how widely circulated and trusted is this publication as well? I mean, Well, I and it is, it's across Canada. Uh, it's a Canadian publication. Um, a lot of good agents have been in here. A lot of good uh, brokerages are advertising in here and a lot of Century 21 as well. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to have a little bit of a conversation about it just so that if um, an agent's thinking about um, either advertising with this publication or putting their information in here to be very careful because you can be held, uh, held uh, liable for your information you put in here. And I don't know, I see it, it, it really, I've got another one here, top, uh, Canada's top 600 offices, or no, 60 offices. So Canada's top 60 offices. Now, one of the offices in here happens to be a, a brokerage I know in town uh, where I live, and um, they have about 100 agents. Actually, in the publication, they say they have 80, so they have 80 agents. Um, the numbers that are in here um, have their average agent making $4 million in commissions a year. Like... They, they, it was the, the statistic they put in there in terms of the amount of um, transactions. They said themselves like 300 transactions, but $1.4 billion in gross, gross sales. So sorry, not in commissions. It would be $4 million average sale of their, uh, of their homes. So, and I know that's just not true. So it's, it's, they are not audited dumbers that they put in here. And, um, and that brokerage happens to uh, post a lot of online social media advertising that they're the, one of the top 60 offices in Canada as per Rep Magazine. Now to you, if you saw that, would you would you think that? Well, you, you see in a national magazine, you, you kind of assume that their sources are correct and legitimate, but you're, like you're saying, they're not audited sources. So that's very misleading to consumers, that's for sure. Um, like how widely known is it that they, they have this kind of practice to like create these top lists too? Because I mean, I guess yeah. that maybe they're technically getting away with it too, because they're just saying top 60 agents doesn't say top 60 of what or, or how, what metric they're using, because it looks like they're not using any metrics whatsoever. So, Well, they're using what's given to them by the individual agents. And as we know in the real estate industry, um, that can be blown up a little bit more than what we, um, I mean, it shouldn't be. I mean, the agents that, uh, if they say they've done a hundred transactions this year, they should have done a hundred transactions this year. Um, you know, but uh, people love to, you know, the biggest and the best, and I'm, I've done so many and all the rest of it, but you have to be accurate in order to get gain somebody's trust. So um, I've, got, I've got one that actually I don't mind. Like if they did more of these, the hot list, for 2015, 150 sizzling players who are setting the industry on fire. 
that to me is fine. Like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm out there and making deals, you know, I'm going to be on a hot list, but they're not saying they're a percentage or, or amount of deals. They're not saying that, you know, I'm a top 100 of, of, of nothing. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's just, you've got to be careful what you're putting in these publications. And, and, and if I was the publication, I would be more careful in, uh, in, in the sense that, you know, just journalism, right? It's well, for sure. And, and if you end up getting bad PR coming out of this, it could ruin your reputation as a magazine if it does get any sort of traction too. Like, so, can you imagine, pretend you were Sam McDaddy selling 700 homes and you were put beside the top 100 and the guy next to you sold four. Yeah, well, I guess the thing is, though, that consumers wouldn't have any way of verifying that too, right? Well, and so, that's the concern. Yeah. If this gets in the consumer's hands, which I'll be honest, I think this magazine is more for the agents than it is the, the consumers. But I know a lot of brokerages will put this magazine out on their coffee tables and say, I'm the top 100 of this and then put it in social media. So, And then it gets people going to their website and, and buying advertising in their, in their publications. But I'm, I'm a little concerned. I'm actually a lot concerned with this uh, because they, here's the thing, they do a great job. It's a nice magazine. That concerns me. If you've got a company, I think they have about 40 other publications that they do within um, like lawyers, uh, accountants, mortgage brokers or investors, investment magazines and stuff. So it's not just one player that's doing a real estate professional magazine. This is a big company that does it amongst different uh, industries as well. So I guess you're suggesting that agents would probably stay away just from an accountability standpoint and like, I, I just, I, I, when I see something like this with unaudited numbers, uh, inaccurate information, um, I've gone through it. There's a, there's somebody who has a, a Brantford real estate company that said it was in Bradford. I mean, there's, it's not, you know, they're not even editing very well. Um, so I would be concerned with the uh, amount of information or what I give them. I actually wouldn't do anything. I, there's some nice articles in here about nice brokerages. There's a nice article about a, a Remax Infinite brokerage here, and so it's it's hard not to want to, you know, take a, take advantage of some free advertising, right? Well, if well, that's the catch, on. right? Like, right. You, if you're if you are like a low volume agent, it could be very tempting to try and get your way onto these top lists and, and get your you know exposure through these types of magazines. But then, like you said, on the other hand, too. If, if you have to, you know, inflate your numbers or do something a little less uh, honest to do that too, it, it can obviously be damaging to you in the long run, especially if you get caught or, or, or you know, uh, shown out for it too. So. Well, I know, um, I know Central Toronto Canada has been, um, has been approached to do a uh, um, top franchises in Canada type stuff with them and they've asked for numbers. And it's not that Century 21 Canada doesn't want to give their numbers. They just want to make sure if the other brands are giving numbers that they're accurate. Oh, for sure. They said, listen, we have no problem sharing our information and saying we're a great, great franchise to be with. But uh, if you've got the, the big balloon there saying um, and ballooning their numbers, um, which, you know, tends, it can happen. So if that's happening, then it's just going to, you know, like you said, perception, sometimes reality. And if it's in false and misleading, it's, you know, it's hard to... Uh, it's changed that, you know, perception within the industry. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's an unfortunate circumstance, but I guess everyone's got to draw a line somewhere with what they decide to divulge to a magazine like this as well. So, hey, listen, there's good publications out there. There's, you know, REM uh, Real Estate Magazine. They're, they're, I, I find it, you know, the, the articles are in there all, you know, accurate and they, they, they do a lot of, uh, um, I guess, promotion of the brokerages that are doing good things within the industry, whether it be from a charity standpoint or they've had a new, uh, maybe a new president, CEO, general manager, whatever it is they're doing in there, they'll, they'll put the information in there, but it's accurate. It's stuff that is checked over and making sure that they um, are hold, held to a different standard or a higher standard, so. Yeah. I think in general, everyone would just, if you see a professional publication, you just kind of assume that everything is accurate and double checked and sourced properly. And that is kind of the problem with a situation like this where it, it may not be, right? Uh, because like as a consumer, or as an agent who's reading the magazine, you're not necessarily gonna go through and, and check to audit their numbers to see if, if it is accurate. Like like you said, you noticed some inconsistencies and so has uh, have other agents as well. And that is obviously a cause for concern, but it is too bad that you have to have this kind of level of skepticism whenever you see publications of any sort, I guess, come out with numbers uh, because you don't know necessarily if they've been audited or what the metrics are too. Yeah. And well, and within our industry, and I know with uh, the Toronto Real Estate Board, um, they do not give out numbers 
Okay, they do not share numbers, and I see it all the times in the publications. As per Treb stats, Treb stats this, Treb stats that. That's not Treb stats, and that's the other thing that's uh, misleading in a lot of advertisements. Treb does not give out the numbers. There is companies that uh, you can um, pay a subscription to. IMS is one of them, um, where they will give you the statistics that they scrape from the Toronto Real Estate Board. We've contacted Toronto Real Estate Board, and we've asked them if the, those numbers are accurate, and they say um, they cannot be verified because the, that, those numbers that were taken from them were not taken with permission. So um, there, there is still um, a, a difficulty within the industry in terms of being able to rank anything or anybody. Um, and even if you do say, okay, the Toronto Real Estate Board stats, this person has sold the most homes. Well, what about somebody who's a... Um, you know, working for a new home builder that doesn't go through the Toronto Real Estate Board, or they've done a, a, a nice exclusive land deal worth $20 million. They're, that stat doesn't, you know, isn't counted towards their numbers on the Toronto Real Estate Board. So even, even if Treb did have stats, how accurate would that be? So I can understand why the Toronto Real Estate Board doesn't have a, a necessarily a, um, a, a statistical ranking system within their organization, but I should say our organization, but, um, but uh, yeah, you've got to be careful when you say any sort of statistic that you can prove it and that it is an accurate number. Just kind of as, as an aside to these kind of more like exclusive listings or like new home builds and such, do you think that accounts for like a large percentage of listings? Do like do most go through MLS or would, is there a large chunk that don't, that would be uh, discounted from these kinds well, of Well, um, I know brokers that will put specifically on the ATRUB uh, system in order to get the stats so that they can say that they're a number one. I also know that uh, there are builders that don't put it on the uh, the MLS. I, uh, I know a broker in particular that was the number one, um, number one salesperson within that brand, even worldwide. And they were going by units sold. He didn't sell one unit. He had a team of people that sold all the units for the, the, the new home developer. Um, but it all went under his name and he got all credit and he says he's the number one real estate agent in, in the world. Well, was he? You know, yeah. that's the question. Well, it is the question, but that perception, again, probably helps a lot when he's trying to brand himself of as course. well. Of so course. And we're going to do that. We're, we want to, yeah. yeah, we want to have some numbers to. It, it always amazes me whenever I go into an office or, or talk to agents, they always seem to be the number one in something. <laughs> so <laughs> absolutely, they, they, they find a way. Uh, yeah. in, you know, no, no, it's a lot of a. A lot of asterisks is, uh, on the end of their name, uh, you know, just to explain why they're number one within that uh, street on that day in, the, in this particular hour yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, for That's, sure. Yeah. So just a uh, yeah, note for real estate agents as well as consumers, be careful when you look at these numbers because you never know where they came from or how people got them. That's right. Okay, so maybe let's move on to our next segment, which I was going to call Tool of the Week, but I don't think that sounds the greatest. So I think we're going to go with App of the Week, uh, just for lack of a better term. Um, that sounds good. <laughs> so, so yeah, Tool of the Week, not the greatest. Um, so Aaron recently had a meeting with some representatives from a company, askfortask.com, and we were pretty impressed. We looked into it a little bit more. And uh, well, I guess, Aaron, do you want to talk about Ask for Task a little bit? Because it's got sure. some very good, uh, interesting applications for real estate professionals. Yeah, and they have no knowledge of me uh, speaking about it today. So it's, it's not like <laughs> it's I'm not endorsed it. officially. It's yeah. not endorsed. And to be honest with you, I'd still want to continue with um, trying it out just to see how it is. But I thought it'd be an interesting uh, uh, app to bring up. I'll call it an app because everything's called apps now. Uh, but it is, uh, is available on uh, on the uh, just an internet site as well. So that's how I went online to check it out. Yep. Just so everyone knows it's ask for task A S K for task T A S K dot com, and it's also available on iOS and Android. They have an apps for it as well. You can find the the, uh, the iTunes Store as well as the Google Play. F O R, so, right? Not the number four. Yes, ask for F O R. Perfect. Um, so I went on it. Um, Kind of played around with it, and I thought it was great for real estate agents. And I thought, um, well, I'll give you the concept. The, the concept is um, that if you need a task completed, for example, you're listing a house on uh, next Friday or this Friday, doesn't matter. Let's say this Friday, just because it's uh, so quick. Um, and you need the house, maybe a room painted, uh, some electrical work done, maybe some plumbing or whatnot. They've got um, a network of 20,000, so to over 20,000 um, uh, taskers that, uh, that they can call upon uh, throughout Canada in order to complete that task for you within, whether it be an hour, 24 hours, six days, whatever it is. And you go on there, so let's say I wanted a painter, I'll click on painting. Um, I need about a small room done, $200 I'll spend, and I need it done by tomorrow 
um, and they'll give you an idea of time that you're looking for. So tomorrow between one and four. So you send that off to them. You already have an idea of how much it's going to cost and they'll try and match you up with somebody who wants the business. Um, they'll send you back an email or call you and they'll say, here's, uh, we have a match for you. This person's willing to do it tomorrow from one to four for $200. And, um, uh, here is their rating and they have a rating system that will, um, help you to decide whether or not you want to have them come and actually paint the house. So, um, they vet, um, they say out of the 20,000, 5,000 of the taskers are fully vetted and they called, uh, I think it, they have a name for it. Official uh, partners of some sort. Maybe, I yeah, f five star rating or something like yeah. that. Um, so they're, um, and you know, again, it's not a, it's not service, a service that I've yet to fully go through. Um, I'm actually uh, looking to get a cleaning done um, for somebody next week. So we'll see how it goes. But I thought what a, what a creative way to get something done quickly. We all have people that we trust to do certain things. Let's say I have a trusted plumber. But can I call that plumber to get something done tomorrow? I'd say nine out of 10 times, my plumber's busy. Yeah, the one thing that impressed me, I was looking through some of the reviews and just comments on uh, the various portals for the site. And um, it seems like it's generally good reviews. I mean, there's there's always going to be complaints of people saying, you know, like the, the plumber didn't show up or whatever. And that's kind of the danger where you have uh, these large vendor lists that you're kind of dealing with. And I'm sure those pl the, that plumber that didn't show up would get a bad rating out of it. But you can pretty much trust when you've got um, like peer reviewed uh, vendors, especially if they've got a lot of reviews, you know, they're all five star reviews for this one plumber that he's probably gonna be fairly reliable. And it did seem like most of them were fairly quick too, which is something that's difficult to enforce. I imagine as like an ask for task, I like guess their company, well, you know, you see, as you said, 20,000 vendors, it's hard to kind of manage all of those. Uh, and we have similar situation with spotlight too. the spotlight program. We have a, a ton of uh, vendors from photographers, uh, to like aerial photographers and videographers and such too. And you know, they're all private contractors, right? So making sure that they're all up to snuff and, and, and doing everything properly, making sure that they're on time, kind of following protocol and stuff can be difficult. So I'm pretty impressed that, you know, considering 20,000 uh, some odd taskers that they have on this, uh, that they're getting as good reviews as they are. So that, that's, that always impressed me just looking at it initially. And they're, they're actually willing to work. They were saying that um, if you were to go back and uh, complete a task again, let's say you were to use the same person or you really like that person, they'll put it on your preferred person. So they'll go to them first. So if you're looking for the house to be painted again or another cleaning to be done, they're going to still try and use the same company that you've been happy with. So you're able to rate them and uh, and uh, be have preferred vendors of yourself, your, you know, yourself as well. So, you know, that for real estate agents, especially busy ones that are always cleaning houses and, and all the rest of it, uh, you know, that, that's... I think a good uh, a good service to consider. Oh, for sure. And just so everyone knows, this is available in several cities across Canada. Right now, I'm just looking at the city list here. They've got Toronto, Calgary, Mississauga, Brampton, Ottawa, Edmonton, Montreal, and Vancouver. And they're also looking to expand to other cities as well. And there's a little request forms too, if you're looking to expand into your market as well. So I think they've been in the business for over five years or five years, something like that, they were telling me. so. So it's not something that's just a new startup too. Right? Well, I imagine 20,000 vendors, you know, yeah. you, you've, they've been around for at least a little while to get that kind of uh, backing going there, like that, that referral network. And I, I mean, it takes probably takes time to get all these connections set up and everything too and become a popular site. It's a chicken and egg thing too, right? You go yeah. to the vendors, you're saying like, oh, we got this great site and everything. But then at, at the beginning, you obviously don't have any business, but then you can't get business until you get a lot of vendors. But, you know, once you get past that kind of critical mass, I imagine it'll start snowballing. And it seems like they're getting pretty close, if not already have reached that kind of critical mass stage. So, yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, they, now I got an email this morning um, and I believe I'm going to hopefully get it right. But uh, just because I just I, I remembered this and I'm going to give this to everybody who's listening um, a coupon code. They said for any of the Century 21 um, members. Um, could get a discount on any of the services and stuff like that if they type in Century 21. I think it's capital C21. Uh, well, what I can do is like if, if you get that yeah, promo code, I can put it in the show notes for the podcast. So check the show notes and we'll have the, yeah. hopefully, well, hopefully we'll have a coupon code yeah. there for you. Um, for the next uh, four weeks. Okay, so I'll, I'll put the, the expiry date on the promo code as well once sure. we confirm that with the company. Good. Yeah, so I guess we can- For sure, let us know too. Give us some feedback on uh, on the site there and the, on the Homania 
uh, podcast site. I don't know if we can give feedback there. Where can you give feedback? Well, we, we've got a, an email podcast at homania.com. Uh, when, when we do the closing and in on the show notes, there will also be the contact sure. email there. Uh, you can always just email us there. We can we can read a feed, go, go over all your feedback on it. Maybe, who knows, maybe down the road we'll be giving either glowing comments about Ask for Task or the reverse. But I imagine they'll buy, probably be fairly good from what I've seen so far. So yeah. Good. All right. So I guess we'll probably just start wrapping it up here then. So if you like the show, subscribe to our show on Stitcher, iTunes, and just recently Google Play, because Google Play's just launched podcasts this week, or wherever you find your podcasts online. And please don't forget to leave us a five-star review on those sites, because it really does help finding uh, with discoverability. So you can watch this and past shows at spotlight.center21.ca slash podcast. If you need to reach us, you can email us anytime. And again, this is what we just mentioned before at podcast at homania.com. That's podcast at H-O-M, as in Mary, E-A-N, as in Nancy, I-A, dot com. So this podcast was brought to you by the Spotlight Marketing Program, an exclusive marketing package available only to Century 21 agents in Canada. <laughs> Spotlight provides agents with a comprehensive internet marketing strategy for their listings. We provide high-quality HDR photography, stunning HD video tours, a cutting-edge responsive website, and an extensive advertising system that will help sell your listings faster, sell them for more money, impress your clients, and generate leads. Find out why so many top agents are using Spotlight by visiting spotlight.central21.ca today. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. We'll see you next week.